Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Dr. Mohan Ananda. He's a scientist, a lawyer, a serial entrepreneur, and an author. He is helping people succeed in business. I have Gary Fredericks. He's the CEO of On Point Partners, where they provide back office services for small businesses. And I have Stuart Wingens with Induna Advisors, where he offers fractional chief operating officer services and brings resources together to help scale your business. The question I have for the three of you today, what did you learn from the worst coach, teacher, or leader you've ever had? Mohan, kick us off. Thank you, Robin. It's, a, it's an extremely interesting topic. Uh, I mean, to the extent I have my experience, I did not really have the worst managers or teachers, or I, I, I was lucky enough to have good ones. But I could really see how the, because I've become a manager for the last many years. So how, what I should avoid doing not to become a worse manager mm -hmm. and how I could help the people working with me, which I learned working with good managers. That's mm -hmm. the, the fact. The, the worst managers don't respect mm -hmm. anyone. They have some kind of a, a, a inferiority complex as a good manager you should irrespective of whatever you should respect the people you work with that's a, something i have noticed the worst managers they don't plan they don't think ahead mm. to be able to know what is going to happen otherwise things can go in the wrong direction so a good managers they do the well planned they expect the unknown or they plan for contingencies, which you have to learn how to do it properly. And the worst manager generally don't support the people working for you. They're only looking at their personal interest. So they don't cover the back of somebody, even somebody does something wrong. It's like a, a sink or swim together. Not uh, you are on your own, and the, the rest of them are, you know, they're on themselves. So if you want to be a good manager, you should really protect the, the team uh, you work for. And yeah, so those the happy. three things I heard was respect, have a plan, and support your employees. Awesome. Stuart or Gary, what's, what have you learned from the worst managers you've ever had? I actually learned probably the biggest lesson of my life, which was to be confident in myself mm. i had a manager when i first started working on wall street i had all these ideas and i would go to my manager and say i got this idea to do this we can do this better it was a woman she would tell me no that's a stupid idea we can't do it and then she would go to the bosses present it to them take it as her own and i'd be sitting there saying well, i had that idea mm. so i learned pretty quickly that i needed to have enough confidence in my, myself and my abilities to make sure that that idea is mine and it stays with me. And that's been something I've used my whole career. It's one of the things I think is one of my strengths is that I have confidence in my abilities now and I know what I can do, and what mm -hmm. I can't do. And so there really aren't what I would call crises that, that come up in business because I know, I, I know that I can take a deep breath my skills and the skills I have and, and the ability to work with other people, I'll be able to get through anything. I, can, I, I have not been fortunate enough to have a lot of great people that I could work for. I'll mm -hmm. just be completely candid about that. I mean, I can't even say that I've ever actually had a, a mentor, but that's okay. The one thing I've learned from every person that you might consider as a bad manager is exactly what I don't want to be. Literally, if I, I find myself modeling the opposite behavior, but maybe it's not their fault. For example, did they get that job because they had technical expertise, but they were never prepared on how to lead? So they're, they base their leadership on what they believed it should be. I find that these bad leaders tend to be self-serving. I think they have a lack of preparation in terms of you know, what it takes to be successful and understand, understanding that. And they don't get to know you. I've had some, and candidly, two of the best leaders I've ever had have been women. And one of the things they do is they come around and they get to know you. 
they talk to you in an informal manner. It's not like come into the office and sit down and let's talk. It's in an informal, informal manner. And don't blame people. The worst managers, they just, they always want to blame somebody else. I can tell you the truth and I'm not patting myself on the back, no matter how bad the situation is, I will stand up and say, I'll take responsibility. It was the team's effort and we will work to fix it together. Hmm. So what I've learned from bad managers is I don't want to be like that. I'm similar where I feel like I haven't had a lot of really good managers in my life. One thing I learned from one of the worst managers I ever had was not to micromanage this back in the day of when we used to meet on conference calls, cause I was off site from everybody and she would sneak onto my conference calls and then critique me afterwards about you did this wrong. You did that wrong. And if you're going to be there, why don't you just run it? I had work I could go do. Hmm. So that was something I learned from uh, a manager I had was that I would never undermine my employees success by micromanaging them and i would like to footnote that my first manager was a female i've had great female managers since then i just don't want people to think that you know i didn't <laughs> like her because she was a female no nope, that's fair a great female manager since then great male managers and lousy male managers so it's it's uh not gender specific non-gender non not anything specific. I, I I mean, I don't have that experience of working for so-called the worst managers, which I told before. Uh, my learning came from actually the good managers. In fact, I've had the fortune of working with some of the smartest people you could ever meet. I mean, I worked with uh, Nobel Prize winners uh, in, in, the, in the NASA, some of the people who are really, really the innovative uh, the people. And the management style they had, they want you to do something similar, meaning they left me alone. That's the how you really create new things, innovation, new ideas, solving complex problems. I mean, from a technical point of view or even financial point of view. So my experience is different, but I think if you're a worse manager, you would not do it, all those things. We talked about micromanagement. Many, the so-called, the, the compulsive people, those who want to take everything for themselves, they, they do everything micromanagement that stops creativity, that kind of, you know, eliminates any possible of new thinking. So they don't want to listen to new ideas and things of that type. If a, a company has to grow or the person has to grow, you have to have a full freedom. In fact, I've read someplace that a really a good manager should tell everybody, I believe in you. Meaning mm -hmm. you basically give the responsibility to the person and see how he uh, you know, brings things back. Then there is a, a, a possibility of incredible growth. That's just my experience. And I believe in it. My husband's a creative and I asked him this question and he said, Bad managers squelch creativity. So he agrees with you on that, Mohan. Right. So I have one more question before we get done with our 10 minutes. And that is, if you're working for a bad manager, can they change or should you just get out and go find a better manager to work for? Well, I don't think that a person who's bad, and I'll be quick here so Gary can get in here. I, um, I don't believe that a person who's bad has the self-awareness to know they're bad mm -hmm. because they've, they've been allowed to go throughout their career with these same habits. So, you know, save yourself and get out is my recommendation. Yeah, most people kind of uh, fall back on who they are when, when they're managing it. And sometimes it's just a matter of training, uh, as Stuart said earlier, but <clears throat> I, I don't see them changing the way they are. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I would get out as quick as possible. Not my out. job as an employee to train you as a manager. Mohan, yeah, go ahead. I, I agree. I think it's very hard to change people. In fact, I, you know, instead of changing the manager, the same thing, the people who work with you, if you know that person is, for example, you know, bad, you know, bad in the sense it's dishonest mm -hmm. or there is lack of integrity, you don't try to change them, you walk away from them. So it's the same thing. The manager is bad and is a, especially uh, unreliable or there is lack of trust. Uh, I would just uh, walk and find somewhere else. So I, I wish I had gotten that advice early in my career. It could have saved me some heartache. <laughs> that is our 10 minutes. I'm going to cut us off there. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me. And I look forward to speaking to each of you again very soon. Thank you for having us.